Hello and welcome to my shop here this morning. I'm going to go to the next step with the radio I'm just starting to work on. And the next step, I think, is to get the uh, antenna that comes with this radio working with the radio. Now, I, I tried this yesterday with a wire antenna hanging out in my backyard. I got pretty bad results with it. Uh, the radio is designed for this particular loop antenna. Hey, where's the antenna? Oh, it's hanging up here. I've just simply hung it but kind of very temporarily up here. There's the wire coming down. So I think, you know, that keeps it off my bench. That's the main reason I didn't want to stick it on there. It's a really awkward thing to have flopping around on your bench. It's already got a bit of damage on it, right? It's got this damaged part here. Nothing serious though. But I really want to find out that it's working. And, and why wouldn't an antenna like that work? Because of shorts in the uh, in the wires, especially right here, right in here. So let's start with taking a close look at that. Then we'll turn on the radio and see what it does with the uh, proper antenna connected. Let's try. Let's try taking a look with this camera here. Take over the focus here. Give me just going to take just a moment while I get rid of the previous dialog box, which won't work anymore, and bring up the new one here. So I find the automatic focus on these cameras to be just nothing but annoying in this kind of environment. They're constantly focusing on the wrong thing, of course. Not like me. I never focus on the wrong thing. So there we are. Well, I, I think right off the bat, the first thing I gotta say is I think I could kind of take all this tape off and see what's going on underneath. Yeah, it's close, but I don't think there's a short circuit there. But uh, this uh, this is the stiff wire here, and the flexible one is the one that's losing its insulation because this really isn't all that flexible. You know, I think this is probably a bunch of old wire. What do you do? He took off the older, older wire and put on some old wire. You know, it's color coded and everything. So, not. Uh, I think I know what's going on here. I think I think once again it comes back to what I said before about chances are this is a botch up of two radios. Um, I think, I think that's what this is. I think we're looking at the antenna from one radio, you know, identical radio, and the chassis of another. And that would explain why we've got the proper kind of wire and they're in two different states here. So we'll, we'll assume that what's in here is okay. That's a good place to start anyway. Flip this guy on. Here we go. Just like that. That doesn't doesn't light my dim bulbs at all. So the voltage at the set is 105, about 100 volts. There you can see the bulbs starting to light up a little bit. Perfect. Let's give it full voltage. Let's make sure it's on the A band, which it certainly isn't. A band. And let's see, we're, we're flipped over here. So this is the area, the low end of the A and band is here. Let's see what we can pick up with it. So, can't imagine that. I'm not picking anything up. Oh, there we go. We're cooking. So 
is a station right on the edge of some noise. The station and the noise is sitting right beside it. We'll try twisting the antenna a little bit here. Okay, now there's a capacitor up there. Let's try turning that around a little bit, see what happens. So I've taken that capacitor from completely loose to tighten right up. I didn't hear anything change. I didn't hear any changes at all. Okay, so that's kind of on the assumption that twisting that capacitor, trimmer capacitor, should cause some kind of tuning effect. I mean, that's a pretty good assumption, isn't it? Really? Didn't do anything. Uh, what's that mean? Does that mean that antenna is, is pooched? Does that mean uh, these wires could be connected incorrectly? There's a really good chance that that's what's happened here. How do I know the guy connected these wires correctly? Now these are color coded and the color codes are referred to in the manual, but you know, you can't see the color and neither can I on these. See how they're bundled together with tape? So if the last guy just randomly attached these wires, then you know, there's a really high likelihood he got it wrong. If the last guy tried to identify these, how could he? You'd really have to do a little bit of testing back, back and forth. <laughs> Let's keep going on the antenna here. It's a style I use, eh? Wrap two, and then on the last one, when you're wrapping it, you use the tape to go over all three. Hey, just like me. Did I do this? <laughs> Did I do this radio six years ago and it's come back to me? No, I don't think so. Well, there we are. Now we get a better look at these three. I still can't see any color differentiation here. Before I take them apart, probably a better assumption is he got them right. And I just want to verify that. So verifying that's pretty easy, I think. I think. I think we have a nice diagram in the manual. And uh, with it, I'll look up in that corner there. Connectors right, right in the corner there. So I'm going to take an ohmmeter and simply look for. Wait a minute. I'm going to use an ohmmeter. And yikes! I might just see zero in every direction. Um. I think looking at the manual would be a good idea. Now I've got it here in paper. That's it on the computer. <laughs> there it is. Antenna. So we're looking for here. Here we are, right away.
C2 1400 kilocycles. So I was adjusting this uh, at the low end of the band. That may be why it was having no effect. Loop socket, blue, black, and green. Well, the green one, I can see a green wire coming to this point. So I can probably identify the green one easy enough. Assuming green in, green out. Also identify what amounts to amounts to the antenna, the antenna, the antenna wire. Ah, you know, I know why, I know why, I know why that is. If you look here, you see the loop antenna. And then you see a wire that goes out straight to the antenna. Off one A, B, C. Those are the three connections. So we know the one that goes straight to the antenna is the blue A one. We already know the green one is the B one, and the black one the C one. Assuming it's the same color in the rate limit. Now there's a diagram of this stuff here. So we look for. So here it is. There's the antenna right there. So we see, what do we see here? So we're kind of just, so we see green coming to that pin. Now, they didn't make this easy, did they? They put the ABC on here? They put ABC here, but they didn't bother putting it in here. So blue wire to the antenna. Green wire you know, if I turn this like this, then these, these A, B, C actually match. A, B, C. So what should we really start looking for here? Follow the green wire. I don't know, I was not waiting for something good to pop in my head and nothing popped in. Just take the ohm meter and trace them in a, in, a, in a rather mundane fashion here. We don't need the radio on for this. In fact, we don't want it on for this. shop here. It's hanging in front of my big screen TV. Okay. So I can put this here. And put this on, no not there, put this on 200 ohms. Hopefully it's going to know the difference between a short point one. Okay, so this, so I, yeah, you can't see everything here all at once. So what I'm doing is I'm just picking which wire, picking a wire up here. Then I'm going to poke my way to find it. I think I'm on the green wire. So if I go to the green wire terminal, get, that looks like a zero. And if I go to another terminal, I can do it. Okay, so that looks like some resistance. And then the last terminal. That's clearly 53. Where do you get 53 ohms from in this antenna? That's a little curious. So, okay, so definitely this is the green wire. So the green wire up above here, just out of your view. This would be green. That's attached to green, so that's good. I think that's good. Now we'll try the blue. I can see the blue up here. I can't see it down here though. So blue, 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 blue is supposed to be 
Well, one or the other two. <laughs> was a blue. Blue went back to the antenna, didn't it? So blue would be a zero here. Point two, point one. So that's that's the zero. Now the other remaining one. There's that fifty again. Fifty. Is there fifty ohms worth of wire wrapped up in that antenna? And then we'll just go back to the antenna screw because this blue wire should show a zero right on the antenna connection screw. Mysterious 50 is showing up. Why is that? Jeez, I can't keep my. Uh... Oh, yeah, you can't see the meter anymore. Oop. see point one here. Let's just go back here again. So here there's the point one, point two, the point is close enough. And then back on the screw. It's all over the map. Okay, let's try from here back to the screw. So I'm trying to make really good connections here with my test lead. So I'm basically at either end of a piece of wire. Uh, anything other than zero doesn't make it too much sense here. 17 ohms, what is going on? Let me grind them in. 20 ohms. What's going on there? Uh, uh, how do you test either end of a piece of wire and get let me take the antenna out Bad contact, that's the only thing I can guess is <coughs> just bad voltmeter contacts. Put this guy back in. So so what's that tell us about the antenna? That tells us This clip for first, first, no, I'll clip it now and uh, right up. It's just crazy what I'm doing, but I might as well do it. I'm just gonna clip it right on the back here on the blue wire. Oh, son of a gun, it's not exposed. The one that is exposed, none of them, so off. So if you look, you can't really see here. 
So the three wires, they look like looks like one of them's hooked up to this terminal. It's not. It's just like passing through a hole. Let's go on this terminal. This terminal must be the external antenna. No, 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 no. No, no, no. What would that be there for? Why would they put that terminal up in there? What are they up to with that? There's a terminal sticking out of the back of the antenna. Why would they make one terminal protrude like that? Same as every every one of these antennas looks the same. Here's a uh, photo of the. Oops. Oops. There's a photo of the proper antenna. So it looks like the right antenna. Here. So right my so so this doesn't show a terminal here, even though there is one. So perhaps it's you know just the fact when you put these parts onto the antenna here, you end up with a terminal sticking out and a I don't know. Terminal for testing? Maybe it's a testing purposes? Well that's interesting. I'm testing right now. So there's a variable there, but there's also this fixed one. Now it's a picofarad, it's a 68 picofarad, it's probably a perfectly fine capacitor buried right inside that uh, antenna. That's my guess. And then this is, this is the, uh, oh, that's interesting. So, what's that? Lead to the capacity antenna. Oh, the capacity antenna, yes. All these radios have a antenna in the cabinet. Uh, Usually positioned, how can I put this? Uh, just just below the top of the of the radio cabinet, just above the radio chassis. It's just usually a coil of about a, a loose coil of about uh, I don't know, five six feet of wire. So did I miss that? It's in the cabinet, and I missed it. I think I would have seen it. So that's what that terminal is for, though. That's the connection to the capacity antenna. That's what it is. Th so, that, so I know now where it is located. It's located, check it out, it's located between the antenna on the back, antenna terminal on the back of the radio and this terminal. If I test through here, I'm testing this capacitor and this coil. That's interesting. You could do some kind of resonance test on that. And see, see, what, see if it's, you know, this should be resonating, I suppose it should be resonating somewhere in the AM band, wouldn't that make a lot of sense? Then this adjustment here uh, is made at 1400, so um, you know, just uh, I, I, I'd have to look at this for a while, but chances are this is involved with the outer loop here. I, you know, I don't know, I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about. That, that's a certainty. We need some certainty? The certainty is I'm not certain. Okay, uh, I'm really wandering around in circles here, looking at almost nothing. Asking myself, why didn't this radio receive well with that nice antenna? It's not because the wires are shorted. It's not because the wires are misconnected. It's not because anything is totally out of sorts. So it seems. But... But, but it can, the radio doesn't receive very much. So it could just could be could be parts, could be tubes, could be almost anything in here. So let's not get too bogged down. Let's let's don't get bogged. Getting bogged down. Unbog. Unbog. Okay. So what we'll say is the antenna appears to be in proper working order. And until I have some reason to think otherwise, that's how we will proceed. I think it's the right antenna wired up correctly. So something else going on with the radio, that's the only conclusion we can reach. So next, let's look at um, some of these front end components. Now, I think the last time I was looking at this and seeing replaced capacitors here and there, I'm wondering, well, why, why didn't the person who did that, why didn't they do all these uh, old capacitors? 
Uh, I got a suggestion from one of you um, that this was probably in a commercial shop. A commercial shop will only change what must be changed to make the radio work. They won't change things which are still okay. Who would want that done in the radio? That would upset me. This Back when this was fixed, back during its regular operating life, probably, probably towards the end, yeah, toward, towards the end of its operating life, a person would not look upon this radio as anything extraordinary to be restored or whatever. This would just be a radio, fix it up. It's an old radio, don't even spend money on it anymore. That's kind of until the new life comes back much later when it becomes a valuable antique. A perceived valuable antique. Probably the local oscillator area here. Um, so there's a trimmer here for this. You got to be careful when you're looking at something like this. You see wires connecting to certain places. You might think, like for instance, this capacitor is connected from here to this. This might be a ground point. It might actually be just attached to ground. Looking at something like this is very misleading. Yeah, these two guys are just leaping out. That thumping you hear is my microphone hitting the top of my head here. So let's just get rid of these two guys. Let's find them on the schematic. What is there? There's only three. One, two, and then there's one more down there. There's more than that, isn't there? Yeah, there's one over here on the tone control. Don't worry about that. This guy is, he's, looks like he's on the IF amplifier. And one, one side is going to ground. So we can probably figure out what this one is pretty quick. The, these ones over here, um, well, they're all, they're all related, it's related to this coil, I'm sure, these coils. Okay, let's take a look at the schematic. Uh, oh yeah, I got it on paper. Paper, paper, paper. Paper. So I'm trying to find these two guys uh, in amongst, I believe, all these coils here. Oh, for crying out loud, I got an even easier way to do it. is the antenna coil. There's the two capacitors. This is the antenna coil here. See my uh, lighting is a little difficult here. That's a little better. Then we want to find these two guys. So this C35 is here. C32 and C33. C32 and C33. C32 and C33. There's C32. Oh. Sorry, sorry if I didn't get this on camera. So there's C32, 3000 picofarads, and there's 30, 31, come on man, 33, it's 33, there's 33, and then they show it as 5600 picofarads. Point zero zero five, <coughs> point zero zero six, and the other one would be 3000 picofarads, point zero zero three microfarads.
Um, C33 shows it just the same. 5,600 picofarads and right above it C32, 3,000 picofarads. Micro microfarads. Okay, um, I might be able to put ceramic in there. I'm not sure if I've got them quite that big. But that's what they are, those two. So I'll hunt those capacitors down. Stick them in. Okay, so I've got the two uh, replacement guys here. And I just noticed the values are written right on these capacitors. 5,600 and 3,000 written right on it. We'll do the... Uh, Let's do the 3000 first. That's one. Yeah, I've done that. Don't like what I've done here. I've got this. This is a this is a shellac wire coming through here, and I'm right in contact with the one I just stuck in. I stuck it in really tight. That was not smart. Not smart. I'm probably not short it there, but. shouldn't be in contact like that. Turn that into a little tiny capacitor right there. Sort of. Not really. <laughs> there, let's stick them up like that. That's a little better. Okay. This guy here. We'll test these two capacitors too what we're up to here. That's all it takes for me to forget where I cut the, the second one away. My wife and I spend much of our day asking each other, why am I in this room? What did I come here for? We spend a lot of time doing that these days. So looking at the diagram here, because I was dumb enough to not register it in my head. Oh right, there's a big wire sticking up down here. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. So 
Well, I've been watching, my, like I mentioned, my wife and I are watching the uh, Chernobyl series on TV. Um, I think there's a fair bit of dramatization going on in that show. Well, and there seems to be almost nobody involved with all the decision making as that uh, accident's unfolding. Surely, surely there was more than just a couple people dealing with it. Literally, in terms of uh, managing the accident. According to this show, it just looks like there's just like two or three people making decisions. And one of them isn't even a, a power plant engineer. So I, so I don't know if this is really true, what I'm seeing. I have seen another documentary on uh, Chernobyl, a British documentary, which I think is, gave me the impression it was really well done. It paints a very different picture of the situation. The one part, they both, both these uh, efforts, uh, documentary efforts, seem to focus on is the uh, the lead guy, the lead engineer, the guy who was in charge. Uh, so the only way to describe that guy is an asshole. That's the only way. You should not put assholes in charge of major things like power plants or, oh, I don't know, maybe even countries. Uh, there's a, if you haven't seen it, I won't destroy anything, but there's a scene where uh, Gorbachev is being for the first time told how serious the accident is. This is almost a day after it started. The guy is telling him how serious it is, and he's telling him, look, we're a couple of days from poisoning 50 million people. <laughs> ah. How would you like to be the leader of a country hearing that? 50 million. There we go. Okay. Hmm. Okay. That's some kind of problem with my soldering iron here I gotta fix. Don't know what happened to my soldering iron there, but it's okay now. I have some more tips for my soldering iron. Better, better than this chisel tip I'm using. I just haven't put them in yet. Some kind of temperature calibration thing you're supposed to do, and uh, I don't think I have a thermometer to do it with. But maybe that'll resolve itself in a bit. Okay, there we go. wire there kind of wound um, uh, kind of wound in here a little bit oh did you see that everybody see that it went flying <laughs> a loose piece of metal in here son of a gun that went flying way 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 over here somewhere So we lost a little piece of wire in the radio there. Maybe that'll make it work better. Capacitors in.
good so let's let's next let's test these two that I took out up here pretty gappy Ooh. I didn't see it that filthy wow wait a minute wait a minute this was faced up like this And yeah, it's got that much dirt on it. How, how does it get dirt underneath it like that? So, okay, so then this is sitting this way. This is actually the bottom side. Where was this sitting that that much dust could come through? Yeah, there's a couple of holes in the chassis there. Wow. Really? That much? Oh, well. Small, yeah, small things fascinate me. Hey, it's good to be that way. Why, uh... Man, if you, if you have to climb a mountain every day to have some fun, that, that's a problem. So we're going to do the leak test, the usual thing I, I like doing with this machine here. So you're watching for the eye to, to open. First it has to be done at 25 volts. So you see the eyes open. There you go. Watch now. 50 volts. Look at that. Boom! Just gives me the impression this is not even connected. Now this is a small capacitor, so it can charge really quick. Boom! Boom! 150. So the way this is reacting kind of suggests to me that the foil is off inside. That it, it isn't actually capacitating. There's no capacitating happening here. I'm not sure. It's a very small capacitor. Here. Here's a similarly small capacitor. This one is 200 picofarads, so that's actually about one-tenth the size. Let's see if we can see any charge rate in it at 50 volts. 250. That looks exactly the same, doesn't it? So I haven't proved anything. Wait a minute. I can. I can. I can. I can go further here. Let's put this guy back on. I'll try to measure its capacitance and see if it comes out to. 3,000. Give me a little more light here. So I can see what I'm doing. 0 0.003. It's going to be on this scale here. I'll just turn it down. Watch for the eye to pop open. Anybody opening? Oh, very distinct. Right here. So let's get the scale right. Point zero. So we're on this in the scale. So coming around on the inside. Point zero zero one. This is point zero zero one. This is point zero zero five. And this is supposed to be a point zero zero three. Look at that. It's almost dead on. So that's why the guy left the capacitors in there. They're perfectly good. How did he know that? How did he know that? Is it because these capacitors don't experience any DC across them? So this is the 5,000, I think. Yeah, it's just a little bit bigger. Point zero, point zero zero five, right on the money. So shame on me. So these two capacitors have come out. 
they're in good shape. Did I do the leakage on this one? I don't even think I did the leakage on this one. Let's try it. 50 volts. Perfect condition. These capacitors are in perfect condition. I should not have taken them out. But how, how can you tell? And how long are they going to stay like that? Well, that's an interesting question. They've stayed this way for almost 100 years. No, this is from 1945, so 50, 50, 60 years. Why wouldn't they stay this way another 50, 60 years? And the answer to that question is academic. Okay, we are probably going to see no difference in the operation of this radio. But let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. Volume down, power on. Volume up a bit. We're on the A band. That's 680. 640 should be just over here. What's that? What have I got that makes that sound? Hmm. Oh, that's a new noise in my shop. I haven't heard that one before. Something new. Something new. That's just what I need. More noises in my shop. Okay. Um, you know what? Let's go for that last capacitor there and get this done. So we're at a stage where the only paper capacitor would be the tone one, which I'm not going to worry too much about. We'll do this IF one. Turn off the power gym before you stick your fingers in there. Always a good idea. So this guy is on pin number not that it matters. One, two, three, four, five, if that helps us. Oh, you know what? How that can help us? I'll be able to help us on this. If we take a look, and we say pin number five. So it's this R4, R7. Pin five is the cathode, and this is the suppressor. Oh, that's an R. I don't want an R. I want a, I want a C. It's this one up here, C17. Where's that R? Oh, the R is underneath the capacitor there. Okay, so the C17. C17. Once again, the value is right on top there, but uh, I think I'm going to look. Parts list. C17. Well, they don't have these in. There we are. C17.1. C point one. Point one. Point one. Point one. I, hope I, I hope I got one of those. Point one. So we're on the IF right in here looking for 17. There it is. 17.1 to ground. What's it on? It's the bypass. It's the bypass for the 270 ohm resistor that's there. So that's what's going on. That's a cathode resistor bypass. Point one. 
So that guy gets a little bit of voltage while he's working. Just a few volts. Maybe 10, maybe 15. It's not, it's not a B plus guy. Take him out of here. Coming out. This is the grounded end. Cut him out before I look to see if I have a point one. Oh, that's, let's 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 test this guy. Yeah, I solder him right back in. <laughs> so, came out for a breath of fresh air, and then he's going to go back in. No, I would never reinstall this. That's not going to happen. Okay, 50 volts, watch the eye, right open again, wow, so okay, so the guy who last worked on this radio knew what he was doing better than me, <laughs> point one, so a point one is going to be found here, on this scale, point one, eh? here we go, so there's a shadowy thing happening right around here, so that's right around the point one mark, but it's not actually opening the eye. That usually indicates it's a leaker. Let's go back here again. 50 volts. 150. 250. Seems pretty good. Seems pretty good. It doesn't measure quite, quite correctly. So we'll say, hey, yeah, it was well worth changing that. And that's a good thing to say. Okay, got to find one. And uh, put it in there. Point one. Let's solder little, that guy in there. See we want it here. There we go. in. Sure. Good. Okay, one more try. Now, this guy's job was to quiet the uh, screen grid on the IF amplifier. So, Looks like it was probably doing its job. Just get some tools. 
of the way here. So I can't imagine this is going to make any difference again. Having said that, we will now find out. Let's let's turn back where we were, somewhere around here. Okay, sounds the same as expected. Um, so what's left to do? Well, you know what? I just there's another capacitor over here. I should really go after. I think we'll we'll save that this one here. Um, so far, <laughs> all these capacitors are working out pretty good. I got this gigantic one here. Point one. This is the same value as the one I took out of here. You know. That really suggests to me this is a replacement. See how the lead is bent there too? It looks like the same thing that was going on over these other. So I think this guy's a replacement. And he's probably in great shape. This one, this one's probably a replacement too. And this is in the audio circuits, is it not? In the audio circuits out there? It must be. Okay enough pondering about tomorrow's work. So that's that's where we're at. There's no more paper capacitors in the radio parts of the circuit except for one that's uh, part of the tone control. It's good. It's good for now. I think we're already at the stage where we're going to do an alignment and see what see what will really come out of this guy. Okay, so thanks for watching, and uh, see you tomorrow. I'm off to go in the sunshine again today. Yes, another sunny day here. Thank God. Cool, but sunny. See ya.